Hello and welcome everyone to our RUAC Spoon Challenge 25 show and tell with our template for this uh, show and tell, uh, RUAC Spoon Challenge 25, the template by Emily. And it's a phenomenal pie server template. Uh, so I'm going to um, just through for the course of this, ask everybody to keep yourselves muted as per usual, unmute yourself when you're ready to do your show and tell. I will ask you to wave so that I can see who wants to go. Right off the bat, the first thing I wanna do is ask Emily to talk to us a little bit about the development of this uh, form and how she you know, arrived at this. Um, and yeah, so let me spotlight you, Emily, and sorry to, to thrust that on you. I should have warned you I was gonna ask you to do that. Um, oh, you're good. <laughs> cool. All, hey, all right. Um, yeah, so very simple. I wanted a device to serve pie. I invented this. It's a triangular device. I used the shape of a pie slice as my inspiration. And nobody's ever made this shape before. Definitely mine. <laughs> nice. Uh -huh. um, yeah, pen pending. So, yeah, pen pending. Um, I made a few over the years, but I've been getting a lot of people asking for them. And so I made a bunch more. And then Sonny saw it on my story and he's like, let's turn this into a template. So, yeah. Um, awesome. I, my biggest contribution is requiring puns on them. This one says in pie we crust. Love it. <laughs> awesome. So one, one question I actually had, when you came up with your particular template, for mm -hmm. your slice of pie, is it actually like, like, did you draw out a pie shape and come up, like, is it an eighth of a pie? Is it a, a seventh of a pie? Like, what's the size of the, the, it is the slice? It is 100% eyeballed. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> awesome. More than an eighth. But yeah, because you don't want it to be too big or it's going to get stuck under the pie. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But awesome. Yeah, it's it's uh, deceptively difficult to carve, um, as some of you may have noticed because of the angles and the fact that it's not a spoon. <laughs> yeah. So actually, we didn't we didn't um, do any sort of a demo or anything, but I'm curious, could you just talk a little bit about your approach for roughing out the form and like yeah. your, your, your rough process for doing that? Um, yeah, for this, I did a bonus stop cut. Um, so I usually do stop cuts in the neck, but mm -hmm. this one, I also did a stop cut right here. Okay. Um, and then I had to did it out and then I put it on my shave horse and use my draw knife to get like nice big planing cuts. Okay. In those directions, cause it's very hard to carve that with a knife. Like you don't have much to hold here. Right. Um, so the draw knife really helps. <laughs> but, yeah. Awesome. Nice awesome. Well, that confirms for me that because that was going to be my approach. And one of the reasons why I haven't done one yet is my spoon mule, uh, which I would use to do that, has been tucked away in the room. In fact, this is the first time I'm back in this room for a couple of weeks because we've been having bathroom remodeling work done. And this has sort of been a storage area. So, uh, yeah, I, I've, I, I'm, I haven't been able to get at it, but I'm looking forward to it. So that just confirms that that would be my approach then. Yeah, All right. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for, for generously offering this up as, a as our template for Rex Moon Challenge 25. And I'm looking really looking forward to seeing what everybody's done with it. So, all right, I'm going to pull yeah, the spotlight away. <laughs> What's that? I said, bring on the puns. Yes. All right. So let me just drop back out to the grid real quick. And um, in case there is anybody here who like is time constrained, uh, let's let's have you kind of wave your hands first to to go early on, and I'll I'll call on you early. Um, so if, is there anybody here who kind of is under a time crunch and needs to go sooner rather than later? If so, wave your hand, and I will call on you first. Or if you're not, if there's nobody time constrained, then we'll just whoever's brave and wants to go first. Don't all wave at once. All right, John in Scotland. Let me uh, spotlight you real quick. 
Well, seeing nobody else is brave, I'll be the first one to have a go at it. So this is the first time we've attempted them, obviously, because we've seen them before. And it must be quite good because the first one that I've done, my wife has already claimed that. Nice. So, and it's in Rowan. There's no decoration on that one because it's got nice colours to it. And we don't do pie puns because to us, our pie has got meat in it. So this would be for like an apple tart, which is equivalent to your apple pie. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> but in the end, it's the same thing. So that was the first one. And then there's this was from a bent branch, which is why it's got a bit more crank in it. Same row. Yeah. And then I don't know if you know a chap called Mr. England Denning. I've heard of him. You heard of him well. <laughs> he kept on giving me hassle about chip carving. Lots and lots. So that one is my first attempt at proper chip carving. It's not very good light, but it's got a little pattern up there. And then it's got pie written nice. on it somewhere at the front, even though it's not really a pie scoop, it's a cake scoop. But so no, they were that one was probably a bit more difficult because of the crank in the wood. It was just a, a bent branch. Says, but mm. a, Say same thing, not much decoration, just a little bit of chip carving, but no, quite enjoyed it, and I think I'll be making some more of them. Awesome, looks fantastic. Great job on your chip carving. <laughs> Getting there, but that's, that's all Ian's fault. Yeah, it was nag, 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 chip, chip, chip. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, no, quite like enjoyed them. We'll do them again. Excellent. Great job. That's beautiful wood, by the way. The color, you're right on the coloration of it. It's really, really pretty. Yeah, it was just awesome. Treat. Great. Awesome. Thanks, John. <laughs> All right. Let me drop back out to the gallery view. Well done, John. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Sonny. Let me uh, spotlight you and unmute yourself. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Emily. Uh, and as Emily mentioned, I kind of uh, noticed the pie server that she was working on and push, pushed her a little bit. I was like, this is something we haven't done before. It's a new shape. It's something that is very functional and, and beautiful. So let's, uh, you know, put that up as a template for other people to work on. Yeah, and, great call. Great call. <laughs> I, I think it, it is definitely a challenge. It's a difficult shape, especially if... Uh, you, know, you don't have the bigger tools like the spoon mule or the draw knife. Um, so that said, I did use both and also used an ads on one of the two that I made so that I could uh, chop out the, the crank. Nice. Uh, we'll start with the first ones first. Uh, both of them are in walnut. Both of them are, are recently oiled. So I'm gonna wipe them off so they're not super glossy. But uh, this one is the closest to the template. It is all dark wood walnut. Has a little bit of a keel to it, um, so that you know it has a little bit of additional thickness here. I was worried it mm -hmm. was short grain because the grain is kind of running this way. Yeah, out here I wasn't so worried, but back in the middle I was, you know, kind of like questioning it. Um, this one was all done with stop cuts and a draw knife, and uh, it, it's not perfect because of all the flat surfaces. You can actually, with the fresh oil on it, you can see all the shiny bits, um, yeah. but. It was fun to carve. I think this one is, is really functional. It's got a narrow blade, like you're talking about, Chuck, to actually take a, a reasonable, put it in quotes, reasonable size <laughs> of a piece of pie. Um, the second one, I, it was the one I went with, with the ads and um, got a little bit out of control as far as the size of the piece of pie. Um, you'd have This is more like a pizza server, in my opinion. Um, and this one is done radially, so it has that kind of neat, circular spot in the bowl there from the the grain nice um, the tree this is actually a pretty big log you can tell there from the looking at it um i have intentions to do chip carving and or coal rosing on this one i left a nice flat spot on the handle um unfortunately i haven't gotten quite that far yet but i'm, I'm pretty happy with how the, the heartwood sapwood split ended up i was able to keep it almost you know perfect um, very nice and this one I actually tried doing something a little different on the back and I made a foot, essentially, a flat spot. I, I wanted this one to sit up more. The handle is still a little bit too heavy to have it stay seating up. Yeah. 
But when I get to the refining of the handle and the, the decoration, I might lop, lop off a half an inch and get it to actually sit up this way instead of pointing the whole time when it's sitting on the, the table like that. Right. So yeah, that was the idea with the foot and keep leaving a little bit more mass right here so that it has that weight. Yep. But yeah, these are my two two attempts at, at pie servers. They're uh, both walnut, obviously, because that's all I seem to carve anymore. <laughs> and uh, they they were fun to carve and learn something new. Awesome. Hey, listen, um, could you talk a little bit about your approach with the ads? Like, how did you go about attacking that with an ads? So with the ads, I mean, I'm not a very proficient ads user, but I have one. And I, every once in a while, I look at it and like I should probably use that more and learn how to be better at with it. Mm. Um, so what I did instead of doing a stop cut here and then trying to carve a, a down to that to carve down to the stop cut like I did in this one. So yeah. you know, back and forth a lot. On this one, I set it on its side and use the ads to carve in that okay. transition, this, this yep. shape essentially. And I knew that I was gonna aim for that spot where the heartwood came into it. So I used it there. And then I also flipped it over and used it some on the back here to kind of create that crank or that sinuous shape yep. with an ads here and an ads, ads there. Nice. I used it basically just as a really wide stop cut. I didn't go too, you know, too crazy with it. Okay, cool. Very nice. Both, both are beautiful. I really like them. And as far as size goes on that one, that actually looks like the perfect Chuck sized pie slice. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that might even be a bit too narrow still, which is why I need to now lose weight. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I think the interesting thing for me after making two of them, I was always questioning where these shoulders should land. You know, both of these have like a, a spoon type crank or a shoulder up high to catch whatever's going to roll off the back. Yeah. But I noticed other people kind of cut in lower and started the handle a little bit lower and more made it more like a spatula in my opinion. I think that's, that's an interesting, you know, kind of design consideration of mm. where you have that bend and where you have the kind of the, the shoulders come in. Yeah. It definitely makes it more difficult to have a, a perfectly flat transition right here and a really wide shape at the same time. Yep. Very cool. Awesome. Anybody have any questions or comments for Sonny? All right. We'll go Thanks back out to the gallery view. Great job, Sonny. Really fantastic. Also, by the way, as as always, a huge round of applause and of thanks to Sunny for uh, maintaining our templates, putting, working with the various template authors to, to create the PDFs and get all that put out onto the website. Really appreciate all that work, Sunny. Yeah, you're welcome, Chuck. And, and I would say, uh, just as a note to Emily, I did not follow the, the pun instruction. I'm, I'm kind of notorious for not following all the instructions, um, but <laughs> uh, I got close and I left some space for coal rosing or chip carving. Um, once I get up the nerve to do it, so. Awesome. Great job, Sonny. Thanks. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Brad, I see you waving a, uh, a wooden object that I presumably you would like to talk about. Let me spotlight you. Hold on. A wooden object. So first, um, Nilly, my cute little baby, wants to introduce a friend of hers named Ileana, who is uh, joining us for the first time. She's been on Rise Up three or four times of mine from Vermont for about uh, the last 20 years. So welcome, Ileana. Awesome. And um, so I, um, in my typical fashion, I, um, I looked at the template and then I went down to my shop, which is in another building, and I whacked out something inspired by the template, but not following it. <laughs> so gotcha. I made one that was not very, not very cranky and okay. kind of thin. And um, I didn't get the true triangular shape. I made this rounded. And, I, and I, I gotta say, the reason I wanted to go relatively early is I wanna make sure I go before Mozzie. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna fit. <laughs> yeah, that, he's got some awesome stuff to show us. So cool. I, I, I made one that was kind of skinny and, and quite thin and um, about the right size, but it wasn't exactly the right shape and it didn't have as much of a crank in it. So it is a little bit more of a tart puller than a pie scooper. Okay. And I did, and I did a little bit of coal rosing on there and I put nice. a little pie and then a bigger pie. That's awesome. With a, la a lattice work berry pie. So I thought I did a lattice thing 
And, um, and you know, I do my normal kind of uh, facety, facety cool stuff. And that's about it. That's um, that one I showed a picture of. So that was the first one I made. And then I decided to look at the template and make a bigger one that had more crankiness. And um, so this would really be for a more of a deep dish pie. I'm just going to disagree with, <laughs> I'm going to disagree with Sonny about the size of it because, you know, there's nothing, there's no, is there a piece of pie that's too big? <laughs> right? More is always better, right? I mean, wait a minute. For that matter, oh. slice. But so this one's bigger. <laughs> pie? Who slices a pie? I just eat the whole dang thing. <laughs> yeah, this one is maybe nice. two and three quarters inches wide, and I don't know, 10, 10 and a half inches. And again, so I've done some, you know, faceting and whatnot. It's really cool to try to carve this. I did use a raw knife to get flats and then yep. and then scoop them. So they're actually, both of them are slightly curved in case your pie is a little juicy. Yeah, I thought it looked like it. And then I, I haven't decorated here because I just, I'm still struggling with what I want to do. Put on it. Something that- I love the facets though. The facets look fantastic. Expect me, can you hold up so, yeah. the, the side? You of it again? Yeah, I love I love the way those facets play coming through the transition between the the flat and the handle. Yeah. Kind of the racing stripe. Yeah. Yeah, really cool. So we'll see. And I don't have a pie. I was gonna. I I didn't get a pie last night. So you know, we'll we'll see. Oh, that's right. We that's you know that's something we should have uh, made part of the requirement here. Everybody has to have a pie to demonstrate it yeah. in use. It has to be fit for purpose. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So thanks, Emily. And it was fun, really fun. Um, I may make some more of these because I think they're an object that would sell at a craft show. I agree. I, think they're cool I totally thing. agree. Excellent. Great job, Brad. Thanks. All right. Let me drop back out to the gallery. And who would like to go next? Kalen, is that you waving? All right. Let me uh, spotlight you. I figured I should go next because my joke was just told by you, Chuck, and I think it's pretty funny. So for, oh, my, no. Ruac, <laughs> Sorry. No, for, for my Ruac template challenge, I made my grandma Wolf's custard cream pie. So this Ooh, is that looks so good. And pie uh, called Kugan. It's a Germans from Russian thing in, in the Dakotas. So it's very popular out there. That looks really good. So I had to make a pie um, in order to test out my pie server and it works very well. And I would also agree that I made my pie server slightly larger than the template just because you can have large pieces of pie even for breakfast, which I'll be doing here in a second. And that's okay because we're adults and we can do that <laughs> to ourselves. Um, but I, I actually emailed or um, messaged Emily early on when I was making this because axing this out was mm. tricky for my brain. Like even thinking about how to ax out this long of a form, it was a bit tricky. And then I couldn't decide like, how do you put this in a billet? Do you put this in a billet this way so that you've got mm. long grain the whole blade or do you put it in the billet this way or this way? I ended up kind of cutting the difference, but there's still quite a bit of short grain in here. Um, Actually, I was really curious about that too. So uh, yeah. Emily, I, I should have asked you about that as well, um, but I'm curious like what you, Kaylin, if you want to speak to Emily's approach that she told you, or Emily, if you want to unmute yourself and speak to it, I'm, I'm just curious, like what's, what's the general, do you, do you split the difference? Is that your approach or do you pick one or the other the handle or the, the the blade to favor. Do you want to, do you want to go or should I? You can go, Emily. Yeah, okay. go for it. Um, I kind of put it at a diagonal. So like top here, bottom, or top here, bottom here, because that way that's really nice to carve down the grain. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a little nicer to carve as well. And you get the okay. fun grain lines. But yeah, right here is like the shortest piece of grain, and that's about an inch hmm. long. But I I put a keel on mine too to make it stronger. So yeah, great. That's all yeah. I have cool. to say about that. Awesome, <laughs> thank you for the help too. Um, mine's still short grain, but I think it'll. I think overall it's going to be stronger. And then 
when I was carving it and axing it, I also kind of axed off the, the high shoulders that were in the template mm. um, and then gave it a little bit more of a spoon scoop. And I have a thicker background and then I tapered to a pretty thin, pretty thin mm. flat. Um, when I was carving this also, I did intend to put a pun on because I enjoyed the puns. I was going to do the bake the world a better place, but this particular server felt like it needed some chip carved flowers on there. And so I, um, I attended the great spot at Scottish Spoon Hooli earlier this year and took a class with Gary to learn these, these flowers. And so I added some flowers. Ooh, that's fantastic. It. Thanks. And then I did feel like I still needed a phrase, even if I didn't have a whole room for a pun, but I have just the word savor, but my O mm. and my U got a little connected. So it looks a little funky. Um, and this one's just a nice and pretty piece of spalted big leaf maple uh, that we have here in Washington. Uh, I also cut the butt off and just made it really thin. So this one might break if I ever have like a very crusty, heavy pie or a meat pie. But um, it was a fun template. I was, when I started this, I was like, I don't think I'll ever make another one of these again because I was having a really hard time. But I collect a lot of wild berries and a few of my berry collecting friends have already asked me for pies. Mm, <laughs> victim of your own success, you see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you for the seasonal seasonal template. We're in pie season now. We've moved beyond salad season, so I'm really that's right pie season. And well, so far as I'm concerned, every season is pie season. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I am a pieaholic. I'm not well, a big fan of cake, but I love berries and I love pie. <laughs> I'm the same way. I usually prefer pie to cake. And, and Chuck, maybe that's the motivating factor is you can't have a piece of pie until you make your serve. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I will waste away. <laughs> Actually, that could be a good weight loss strategy. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Yeah. Make your pie. Eat your pie. Thank you, Emily. It was a fun challenge. Awesome. Well done, Kaylin. Great job. All right, let me go back out to the gallery view. All right, Jurgen. Don't forget to unmute yourself. There we go, folks. Yeah, get that. There you go. Yeah, the um I've I've done a, a couple pie servers in the past, and they are a little bit more uh a little, I'd say challenging coming in and getting the Mm. That crank in. Um, this was like one I had made in the past. Um, I've made a few like this. Wow, like, super I, thin. Nice. Yeah, they get real thin. Um, that was there. And then with the Emily's template, I like that, that had a bigger, bigger mm -hmm. crank in there. And then, you know, I wanted to do something on the top. Um, I'm definitely not a pun person, so. I, I wasn't able to uh, come up with anything there, but um, I did look at Emily's um, template and then looked at her, you know, the stuff she did. And for some reason, I don't know, um, something came up on, in my mind for putting up on the top. And I don't know where that came from, but <laughs> so I decided to put a feather on there, you know. Nice. It, it did pop up in my head after looking at her site, so. I'm like, I think a feather needs to go on top. Nice. I was able to. It's certainly not as nice as her feathers, but uh, it was my first attempt at a feather. So that looks pretty good to me. Fantastic job. What yeah. kind of wood is that? That's cherry. So put nice. on cherry. So wanted to make it look like it was just a feather sitting on top of the, yeah. of the template. So I did the template and then stuck the feather on top and I also made a very, th this one also thin, like my other ones that I've made in the past. Um, I just feel that I got to get it thin to get under the, the plum yeah. of the cake. Yep. So mark that. That would be what I would probably try to do too. Yeah. So this is always, you know, I could have made it probably a little higher, the crank, um, a little taller, but um, it still gets, I can still get under the, under the pie with it. Very nice. It was it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, probably didn't have time. I was hoping to make another one, but uh, this time of year was just uh, 
a little too busy, so I didn't yep. get, uh, get a second one out. But yeah, awesome, they're, they're nice. Thanks. Great job, great job. Any uh, comments, questions, anything for Jurgen? Emily, go ahead. Um, what kind of feather is it? Um, I I looked at the the feather was I looked on the on the website. It's some type of um, uh, it's in the prey birds, one of the prey birds. Oh, cool. Um, they had a marking like that when I was looking through. Um, yeah. I forgot which prey bird it was, but you know, I sort of I don't know much about the feathers. Your feathers uh -huh. are more authentic, but um, I did want oh, to. I love it. <laughs> I wanted to find something that was uh, at least the markings. There's some, you know, when you looked at the feathers, it was just like, wow, there's a lot of feathers with all these um, markings all over them and the varieties there. So it was, yeah. a, at least I got to look at feathers. <laughs> looks very cool. Very yeah. impressive. Yeah. Great job. Great job. All right. Way to go, Jurgen. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Simon, who I don't think I've ever met before. Maybe I have and I've forgotten. I've got a notoriously bad memory. Let me spotlight you real quick. Hey, hi. Which, hey, everyone. which wood are you in? Uh, it's a wood I would like to go to. I don't, I'm not there yet. Ah, okay. That's a plan for the future. I would like to have my wood. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be next because I have made a pie. Awesome. It's sitting in front of me and I'm dying to eat it. So I'm going to be <laughs> there to show you. So here's my server. I'm going to try to maybe make it look blurry. Yeah, the backlighting is strong. So there you go. So this is a nice. uh, lime tree. OK. And I baked it a bit because it was very, very, very pale. Uh-huh. So I tried to bake it. It took like forever, like maybe two hours or something to get this color. And I tried a bit of coal rosing on it. It's like a, some flower feather. Very nice. And yeah, it's filled with coffee. Um, uh -huh. I haven't tried um, too often coal rosing, so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I have trouble feeling everything, you know, like so that the the coffee really fills every gap. So maybe my coffee is not thin enough or I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, my scars are too deep. I don't really know what I do wrong there, but it's, you can see it, but it's not, it's, it's not feeling everything. So do you, something. do you put it in dry or do you mix your, your medium, your coffee with a little bit of oil before trying to rub it on? No, it's, it's actually dry. I've put oil before in the scars. And okay. The coffee, but it's dry. Should should I mix it before? I don't know. It's just one thing I've I've seen some people do. I'm not a very experienced coal roser here. Don, I don't know if you're still out there. If you're on, if you have any thoughts, maybe you, or, or anybody else who's particularly experienced with coal roasting, if you've got any advice to offer. Nice. Yeah, I mean, so I use instant coffee, you know, where it's got the big granules, and I kind of gently grind it into you know, the incised cuts um, and I do it all dry and then I oil afterwards. Okay. Um, and then burnish the burnish it back close. And that is, you know, but you want to make sure that you really get the level of saturation. So if you have some lines that just didn't pick up oil after you, oil, you know, put the oil on, add some more coffee at that point, grind it in there, really get in those lines and then burnish it down. And uh, that'll tighten the lines up and make them nice and crisp. So. Okay. Um, I, I was thinking also, is it possible to maybe do several pass of coffee or? Um, you can. The other thing that helps is to do like one coat of oil to kind of seal the surface and let it sit for a few days before you do the coal rosing. All right. It also helps when you, because then when you're drawing your design, if you screw it up, you can kind of wipe it away without it being stuck in the wood grain. All right. Well, thanks for the for the tips. I'll try this next time. Excellent. Awesome. And so, thank you very much for the template. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank also Kaylin that helped me with some baking soda techniques. So, thank you for taking the time to explain this to me. That was really helpful. Awesome. Great job.
All right, let me drop back out to the gallery and all right, Dominic. Let me get you spotlighted there. All right, take it away, Puggy. <laughs> hey, hello, Chuck. It's it's good to see you again. Yes, it's good to see you too. Very good long to be time. good to be back. Yeah. It's been several weeks. <laughs> um, I was yeah, I was very tired again um, to the day today because um yeah five weeks wasn't wasn't enough for me to make a pie <laughs> server. Um, yeah. Emily, I really enjoyed it. Um, the design is really good. And um, I always wanted to make a pie server. And um, I hope that I won't fall into a, into a trap hole um, that I have to make more pie servers for people. So um, <laughs> yeah, I made this yesterday and finished it today. Um, it's, it's plum. Beautiful. And I'm general, I'm, I'm not, I don't know why, but I, I'm not a big fan of coal rosing or chip carving. I, I know I have to try it more often. And, um, but yeah, it is how it is. And that's why I choose the plum because um, usually the plum I have is has some colors. And um, so that's, that's okay for now. Maybe I will do some chip carving around there. In, nice. uh, yeah, just see, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, maybe um, some of that, like just some of those little like Dan Lawrence style tiny triangle chips just as a, as like a little pattern or following that. Yeah. That could be really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking to do. But I didn't want to to rush with that because um, yeah. and yeah, just take my time and when I want to do it. So um, yep. that's better. Um, I left the the bottom bit round because I, I can imagine I'm not quite I couldn't try it yet because I'm not a big baker as well. Um that if the, the bottom is round or just a little bit round um that it's more easy to to get under a pie or under a cake. Um I have to try it. Mm -hmm. Um what I re do regret a little bit because um the shoulder is um so that's quite flat there and um I don't have a big shoulder for uh, for the cake or for the pie, and um, the next time I will make a bigger shoulder. Mm. At the, yeah, I'm not sure it makes much of a difference. It's 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 funny. Like I've seen, like I've got we've got pie servers that are you know similar, obviously type of shape, you know, in metal, and they're literally just like like a like a metal handle, you know, that comes in with a curve into a flat, you know, perfectly dead flat uh, blade. So I'm not sure you actually need a back shoulder to tell you the truth functionally. Visually, that's a different thing if you like it or not, you know, yeah. but functionally, I don't know if it really makes that big of a difference. Yeah, uh, I have to try it, I have to make yeah. it. It looks fantastic, Poggy. I, I love the plum. I'm like, I'm with you. Like, I love when I see other people's coal rosing and chip carving. And I think to myself, oh, I've got to try that. And I don't know whether it's just lack of confidence and lack of, because I haven't done enough of it, that I'm never happy with anything that I do um, when it comes to, to playing with it. Or whether it's just that I, I just get so enamored of the natural wood, even in wood that's not all that highly figured, there is figure there, and I, I find I just get fascinated by it. Um, so it's, you know, the decoration and all of that, it, it's wonderful stuff. It's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. But and that's okay. Know, on the other hand, I've seen some some spoons from from um, Kaylin and Chody yeah. and uh, Fessy Jurgens or um, who else from Chody, Patrice. That's just, you know, it's so motivating. And yep. then if I try it, it's, uh, I, don't know, I don't want to damage it. Yep. I'm like that too. I get a little bit too precious about them. <laughs> yeah. My recommendation is to try it out on spoons you're gifting to people. So if you have presents that are going out, mm. those are great ones to just kind of get creative and go crazy on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good idea. Or get so, uglier wood, Dominic. You just have too pretty of wood. Find yourself. That's right. Merch. Get yourself some like too much. Yeah. Merch. We'll give you some decorating motivation real quick. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> so send me all of that, you know, 
highly figured plum and get rid of that. You can send it over here to me and I'll send you back some really plain birch. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, that is definitely the trick, plain wood. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I have to look for plain wood and do that. <laughs> yeah, so um, Emily. All right, great job, much. Buggy. Anything else? Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's fine. Awesome. Um, so um, to Sunny, thank you again. And um, Emily, very cool design. Um, yeah, just like it. Ready, we can go. Fantastic. Thanks, Poggy. All right, drop out to the gallery. And who would like to go next? Wave a hand. Somebody. All right, Brian. I don't think I've met you before, Brian, or if, again, if, if I have, I apologize. Uh, I've got a horrible memory. Let me spotlight you real quick. No, you, you have it. Um, okay. This is my first time on Ruwak, and um, I just found you guys uh, uh, right after your last uh, spoon carving challenge, and so uh, really excited to join you. Um, awesome. Really happy to have you here. Where are you yeah, from? COVID, this is this is what I I I found in my spare time was uh, spoon carving. So um, I'm not someone who is very experienced, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I don't do very many templates at all. <laughs> I just let the wood speak to me. Um, yeah. And kind of happened with this one. So um, I this is a new wood for me. Um, I have a lot of. Uh, other woods that I use, but this is uh, um, magnolia. It was a, a magnolia tree that they were taking down in my neighborhood. Um, so it's really, really straight grained. Um, so there's only like a few parts where you can see like the actual grain there, but um, this is like- Hold it up a little bit higher. You're kind of below the camera, there you go. Yeah, that's just like one piece, but like everyone else said, it was really tough getting that flat piece. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I tried that um, I was really happy with was um, some ebonizing. I used that vinegar and um, steel wool to darken the handle uh -huh. and get like nice. a nice, nice little stain on there. So it's like this uh, two-tone effect, um, but yeah. It was it was fun. So that was this is my first attempt. This is my second attempt um, for nice. a, much, a much beefier piece of pie. Um, yeah. <laughs> obviously, I'm not done with it yet, but yeah. I'm really excited to to do something with this. Um, this and is what olive. kind of wood is that? This is olive. Okay. Wow. And um, most of and my is it green or is it dry? It's, it's green. Yeah. It is, okay. Yeah, and I, I use, it's got such a beautiful smell to it uh, when you're carving it. Mm. But uh, it also has just, you know, amazing, like these chocolate ribbons that come yeah. down the center of it. So, so pretty. Um, so really looking Yeah, that'll it. be beautiful. Really looking nice. Looking to finishing it. But, yeah. Awesome. Where are you located? Uh, Sacramento, California. Ah. Okay, very good, excellent. Well, welcome to Rise Up and Carve, Ruach, and uh, really, really happy to have you here with us. All right, I'm gonna drop back out to the gallery. All right, who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Jody, and then Patrice. There. Don't Anything? forget to unmute yourself. Am I unmuted? Yes. All right. Here's my pie server. Nice. And it's made out of cherry. Um, I thought that this was going to be hard, and I didn't, I wasn't sure that it was going to be very strong because I just by looking at it, you think that there's going to be some weakness like right in this area here, but um, I was really surprised. I cut like a radial piece and I was really surprised um, how strong it was. And it was a lot of fun um, making the shape. And then 
I did some, I didn't do a pun, but I just wrote enjoy. Nice. Um, and made a little chip carving decoration. Um, Looks fantastic, Jody. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad to have one actually, because this is something that I need. So. Yeah. Me Thanks, too. Emily. Good excuse to add one of these. And my next one, I think I'm going to do like a, a spatula with the same type of idea, but just make it a little bit wider and then um, flatten the mm. front. I need something like that too. So it was a lot of fun. Um, thank you. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks, Jody. Great job. All right, we drop back out to the gallery and find Patrice. There you are. Let me spotlight you. All right, take it away, Patrice. All right, um, I got some mystery wood from Ian Wood and Bark in the Bay Area and made this pie server out of it. And I didn't know where to start. I ended up, um, so I just used an axe. A, a couple of Floyd knives and a hook knife for just this part right here, but that was it. So like planing this was just like a real struggle with mm. the knife. Um, but I think it turned out okay. It's fairly thin. And um, I wanted to celebrate a couple of things being my one year Ruach anniversary this weekend. Yay! And, happy birthday! Yeah, super. Happy exciting. anniversary. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like a year, but or it seems longer. I don't know which one. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, also celebrating um, my ten-year vegan anniversary. So I wrote herbivore on nice. the handle, and that is um, coal roast, and I used. Um, cocoa powder so for anyone whose coffee grounds aren't fine enough you could try cocoa powder mm. um it might be a little lighter in color but um i also do multiple passes um so i'll pull rose it see if i like the pigmentation and if i don't then i'll put more um cross hatching in so you could see like all the bottoms i went in and did deeper yep um carvings and cuts and just focus on layering the, the pigment. And then, um, let's see, I had some puns in mind, but because I wanted to do herbivore, I didn't um, end up doing them, but I liked pie or die, um, and then ride or pie, but I'm not a biker, so someone else is gonna have to do ride or pie. <laughs> But um, let's see what else. And I did make an apple pie and it works very well for the particular um, angle that I got. And I got pie all over it last time. So I, I washed it for the um, reveal, but I'll be eating pie soon. And um, yeah, that's nice. about it. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous job. Fantastic as always. Thank you. All right. Great job, Patrice. Let me uh, drop back out to the gallery. Emily, yes, did you want to say something? Yeah. Um, I just have to say that I have to go now, but this has been really lovely. <laughs> ah, well, we're really happy that you've been here with us and thank you yeah. again so much for the template. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's so nice to see you all. And thank you, Sunny, for doing all of the design work. It really helps. <laughs> Excellent. Have a great rest of your day. Hope we'll see you around. Rise up. Cheers. Good luck, you guys. Bye. Thanks. All right. Who would like to go next? All right, John. And then Michael. Let me get you spotlighted, John. All right. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I just wanted to uh touch on what somebody else said about the weird cross cuts uh i did one up here and in the back as well and when you're first trying to lay that out that is so confusing like where where are we starting the mm. front cut and where's the i mean where does the actual shoulder 
sort of start. So that was my first challenge was uh, sort of getting the, the swoop, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then the second part was the shoulders. Like when you start out really close to the template, it's pretty wide and it's kind of like, like, man, that looks, there's so much there. So as you gradually pull that away, it gets, it gets nicer looking and nicer looking. So I really like, I really like the uh, transition from the handle to the, to the scoop. So um, you, you never know how, if it's going to be strong, but I, I feel really confident about how, uh, how strong this is going to be. So I've had this done for about a week and then I was struggling with, there's so much nice real estate. I really wanted to put something nice on here. So my lighting's terrible, but there there's berries or cherries on a, on a, uh, the basket, whatever we call that, the weave, the lattice. Yep. And then yep. it'll look better when I take a picture, but that's what oh, my it looks up, really nice. That's what my end up looking like. Excellent. Yeah, it was a fun template. Very, very nice. Great job, John. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Let me drop back out and find. Michael, there you are. Let me spotlight you. All right, Michael. Wow. Yeah, great. Um, Spectacular wood as always. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so this was actually really fun. Um, so I think I put a comment when I posted this. Um, it was really nice because actually I think Emily is the first person to do a template that I've actually met before in person. She was. I met her at the uh, Portland Spoon Club kickoff meeting uh, probably a couple nice. of years ago. Um, but yeah, so um, we got the uh, curly quilted big leaf maple with a lot of color. Um, this is the first one I did. Um, and I thought I was doing really well following the template. And, you know, I think it, it may be a little bit narrower than the template. And after I sort of had the, uh, the shape all done, you know, before it was finished, I brought it in to show my wife and she was like, are you making like some stupid kind of Italian slipper or something? You know, what the hell is that thing? So I was like, <laughs> all right, back to the drawing board on that one. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, I think this shape, you know, given how different it is from, you know, the typical spoons we do, uh, you know, having, having to do a prototype, you know, is not too surprising. So anyway, so I did that one, then I went out and got, uh, you know, fortunately that was a big chunk of wood. So I grabbed another, another hunk of it and did a bigger nice. one. Um, you know, it, they're it's pretty funny. They're right next to each other from the same piece of wood. And, you know, they turn out pretty different. The, the other one had a lot more quilting on the handle. I'm sure that's why I picked that first one. You know, I wanted to make sure I got the nice quilting. Mm. Uh, but this one did have, you know, it does have some really nice color and it's still, it's got more for the, the curl and stuff, you know, in the, you know, in the, the flat part. Um, yeah, so I think I showed, I think I showed these off you know, probably a week ago on a Friday night carve or something like that. They weren't finished at that point, um, but I had the shapes done and, you know, I held them up and people all just sort of started shaking their head and like, oh yeah, that looks like a Michael spoon. You know, they are, you didn't follow the template. It, you, you know, it's only a Michael spoon. Um, but yeah, that's par for the course way it goes out here. So anyways, uh, yeah, so really fun. Happy to do it. And yeah, I got a plum tree outside that's got tons of fruit on it. So I really hope to be putting this one to use pretty soon here. So awesome. Thanks. Beautiful job. Beautiful wood. Absolutely gorgeous wood. All right. Let me drop back out to the gallery. Who would like to go next? Who has not yet had a chance to share the server? All right, Mozzie. Let me uh, get you spotlighted. All right, Moz, take it away. I decided to go completely rogue on this one. And uh, I, it all started with this guy here, uh, which is the broken pie server. And uh, it really irritated me, but it inspired a two piece design. Um, that, uh, so what I did was I made a pie server that the handles come off, they unscrew. Oh, wow. Uh, and, uh, and they're fully interchangeable. So I've got a, I got a full set. We've got a, a fork, 
in case you want to be a fat kid and not share your pie and you got a spoon <laughs> attachment and uh and it all obviously feather handles we know where that came from right so yeah nice um, yeah so i can say that it works i happen to have a pie on hand so never made a fork before but uh it works and uh as far as puns go uh i did this while i was supposed to be working so on my um teams for microsoft teams for work i put my um status as i'm occupied and uh, <laughs> My director follows me on uh, Instagram, and uh, uh, when I had a conversation with him the other day, he said, I saw that you were making, um, uh, well, actually, it was my coworker that said it first. He says, I saw you were making pie servers. Uh, is that where the pun came from on your, uh, on your teams? Are you doing this while you're working? So they caught me, but uh, they didn't care. So, yeah. Nice. It was fun. The uh, it was challenging. The hardest part, I'd say, is interchangeable handles. I completely underestimated getting everything to line up properly. Uh, mm. So uh, I used little screws and sockets to hold everything together, and um, yeah, that was a challenge. But it was fun. Very cool. Hey, could you share a bite of that pie? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I want that looks so good. <laughs> good. Blackberry pie. Yeah. Oh, so good. And I'll, I'll say that I made it. I didn't buy it at the store, I swear. Awesome. And I didn't, and I didn't put it in a pie dish so it looked like I made it. Right. <laughs> Very nice. Great job. Great idea on the interchangeable uh, component uh, uh, train wear. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right. Let me drop back out to the gallery. And who has not yet had a chance to go? Carl, let me uh, get you spotlighted. Hi. All right. Um, this is a um, piece of what we call up here prickly pear. And um, it's a wild um, pear, obviously, but it, it's formal name apparently is calorie pear and it grows um, <clears throat> wild it has thorns on it and it has a very very small almost round or spherical uh, fruit mm. uh, the pear but it also has these nasty little thorns on them wow. uh, but um, you'll you'll know this more from the, a cultivar called the Bradford pear yeah. which is very common in the U.S. Um, and it's a uh, it's a cultivar of of the calorie pear, and it um, uh, doesn't have the thorns usually, and it has more of a berry like fruit. And in the spring, you'll see them very commonly. They're just covered with lots of white flowers. Mm -hmm. um, but when they die back, the base root is still a calorie tree and uh, it's very invasive. So there's actually, um, in some counties apparently, there's actually uh, um, almost a bounty put on them to yeah. uh, try and get rid of them. But uh, it's a very, very hard wood, uh, but it has some beautiful color in it. Well, that's gorgeous. And that was a really, really cool uh, template to work with. So this is, only my, nice. second, this is only my second, um, uh, a challenge that I've, I've been on, so uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was fun. Excellent. Well, we're glad you keep, glad you came back and uh, beautiful job. That's a that's a gorgeous piece of wood. Really, really beautiful. Great yeah, job. Yeah, I, uh, the um, the uh, porcupine seemed to favor this tree, mm. and they uh, uh, they stripped the branches off it. And the one one of the ones on the lawn finally succumbed to years of uh, abuse by the porcupine so mm. they cut it down and uh, this is a uh, fruit fruit of the fruit tree excellent yeah. beautiful job Great. all right drop back out to the gallery who would like to go next who's not yet had a chance to share a pie server anybody ah okay sean 
Let me get you spotlighted. Hey everyone, um, this is my first uh, Pi server. I really so enjoyed it. Um, I struggled with uh, getting this part down. I could not resist uh, my spoon um, skill. <laughs> Yeah, I could have kept going. I could have turned into a spoon, but I, I managed to stop myself and and was able to generally get it fairly straight. But you can still see that there. So I, I smartened up a little bit and uh, moved on. To, this is birch, and moved on to an apple. The apple is quite nice. Really like that. Very nice. And a little bit, a little more resistant of the 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 bowl. Yeah. Um, and then I started to play with the the. Um, the ends a little bit just to try to do that little scoop that mm -hmm. you know, folks do. I really admire that. And uh, this is again apple and just looking forward to it. And then I have another spoon that's birch so that I have not done any um, coal rosing or carving or pyro, but I, I'm looking at, I'm just trying to uh, amass the confidence to carve into that. But a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Very nice. Great job. Not one, not two, not three, but four. Very impressive. Well done, sir. <laughs> awesome. All right. Back out to the gallery. Who would like to go next? Anybody? Is there anybody out there who still hasn't gone, has a Pi server to share? If not, then we will move on. I will share my screen and we will move on to the Instagram uh, items. All right, um, speak now or for a little while, hold your peace. Let me share my screen real quick. Go over to, to use that one, share. You guys able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, scroll down to it. Let me, actually, let me refresh in case anybody has posted anything new. to uh, paint the screen. Wow, it's really slow. Now, actually it's my internet connection is unstable. That's all right, I'm unstable too. Is it still loading, Chuck? It is. Can I ask a question of, of you and of the group, I guess? Sure. Um, I was thinking, you know, I know people continue to carve some of the older templates and uh, people who might have joined late and haven't done some of them, but might be interested. I was thinking it would be nice to have a show and tell of anything you've carved that you might have missed the original show and tell just to kind of show off what you've done and sure, yeah, get feedback or ask questions. That's a great idea. Off, it could be an off week and yeah, you know, just have a, a, a show and tell for an hour or two to, to catch up and get it, get some recognition for the work you've done. Well, uh, anybody else have thoughts about that? Anybody else carve things that maybe was after the original show and tell, but would, would want to get online and, and talk about it or ask questions? Funny, I think it's a good idea in general. And um, yeah. I think, it's, I think it's a great idea in general. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is as it is, I feel like sometimes I'm pushing my limits with my wife in terms of my commitments to uh, show and tells. I mean, this one was not bad because, and I was fine with this one being like a five week one, A, because the pie server shape was a, more of a challenge for people. And B, I just had so much going on for the month of August and into early September that it worked out nicely to have a nice long break. Um, but so, well, go ahead. Let me, let me, I'll follow up with you about it. Just okay. Up. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to commit you to doing it, but we can find, you know, some time, somebody to moderate and just, you know. Right. Make it and that's what, that's what I was basically going to say is I think it's a great idea. We could schedule it on uh, like, like the, the week after, say, we do whatever the template, the, that current templates show and tell is we could schedule it for the week after that. And people can just get on and whoever happens to be on who is you know yep the, I, well, I mean, if it's scheduled we, we can you know get together a group of people who are who've been around and 
seen some of the can, templates. Can act as host. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'll, I'll talk to you about it later, Chuck. And, you know, if, if there's other okay. people who are interested or have other ideas about how, you know, they stuff they want to show off, you know, send me a message and I, I'd like to gauge interest at least. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I like it. Um, what about sharing your own template, uh, templates? Meaning a template, meaning you want to offer up a template to be used as a rise up and carve template? Uh, no, like like uh, something you, you uh, design that's your own, it's your own idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we could, we could do that during those same off week, you know, um, things, anything that, that somebody wants to, to share or, you know, yeah. talk about, whether it's a design of yours um, and you're looking for feedback on the design or whether it's you just want to share it and put it up, you know, get, you know, whatever. I mean, that yeah. off week show and tell could sort of be an open show and tell for whatever people want to do. Yeah, and, and for those who aren't on on a regular basis, you know, Rise, and Carve, Rise Up and Carve is often like that. You're carving something, right. you want to show it to people, ask questions of it. So we're not talking about anything that's kind of different than what already happens. But um, I'm just thinking of, you know, we've, we've done 25 of these now. And I know some people have not had a chance to show off these. So just scheduling a time to have a, people talk about what they've worked on. So I'll follow up with Chuck about it. We'll do about scheduling something and who might be around or interested. Yeah, yeah, good, good thoughts. All right, let me uh, jump over. So that was just the template. So let me dive in and start here. So during the disaster, I don't know who this person is. So this is first ever spoon challenge. Um, so it's a pie server and it looks very nice. Great job. Ooh, I like the pie symbol. That works well. <laughs> that was the first one posted. Great job. Jeff Fryette's take on a pie server, which mentioning Jeff Fryette, I should state uh, our next Rise Up and Carve show and tell um, is going, is, or the next template rather. So Ruax Spoon Challenge 26 is posted up on the website and it's a template by Jeff Fryat from New Zealand. Um, as a result, the next show and tell, I forget the date. It, um, it, it's at least three weeks out, but um, it's going to actually be a different time slot than our usual show and tell. It's going to be at four in the afternoon Eastern time. Um, and that seemed to be the, the best compromise to uh, allow New Zealand and uh, Australia and some of those folks to be able to get into a show and tell um, that would still work for at least the UK, it's, it's going to be later at night for the, the UK. So that'll be nine in the evening UK time, 10 at night um, for Germany. And it'll be much later, obviously, for the, the Israelis. Um, so, but it seemed like the best compromise to try and accommodate uh, since Jeff is there in New Zealand so that he could be part of it. So, uh, but October that template 9th. is posted. Sorry, Sonny, go ahead. I was going to say the date is October 9th and 4 p.m. Eastern US. Correct. So just be advised that that one's gonna be at a, at a different time slot, a very different time slot than our usual. Um, so anyway, this is Jeff's pie server. Looks nice. I like the finial action going on there. Very nice. Uh, oh, and that, that next Ruax Spoon Challenge 26 template is posted up on the website. So you can get up there and get a hold of it. Um, Sunny with your walnut server, pie server, very nice. Really pretty. Nice job. JC Woodcraft, a Ruac. Spoon template 25 pie server and his Crocs. 
Ian, Mr. Glenn Dimming. Nice. I like the gray, the way the grain pattern worked out on that. That looks really sweet. By the way, if anybody has any comments, you can feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to say anything as we're going through these. My only thing that I was going to say is maybe someday we'll get custom Ruac Crocs because I feel like about half of us wear Crocs while <laughs> I don't think I've ever worn Crocs. My daughter just got some the other day because all of her co-works, she works at a, at a local winery um, mm -hmm. in combination of the kitchen or the bar, and they all wear Crocs. And they're so, they're, they're yeah, she weird. said that that's what everybody says, that they're the, just the most comfortable things in the world for, for work. So I've never had them before. Don't drop they're, an axe on it, but um, they are very yeah. comfortable. Yeah, they're decent safety shoes. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're bounced. Well, better than nothing. <laughs> Probably better than my sandals or typical bare feet. Not more more shots of Jeff Riot's uh, another pie server. Very nice. And a spoon. Jeff had some time to to carve with the lockdown. Yeah. Pa. Mmm. Pa. <laughs> no, kitty. My pa. Ian Glendening. And I have to say, blueberry is one of my favorites. Really good, beautiful wood. Nice chip carving, great job, Ian. And Nancy, she sent me a note saying that she wasn't gonna be able to be here this week, um, but great job, beautiful spoon, big spoons, beautiful pie servers. Very, very nice. More Jeff. Area of a slice of pie. He's got the formula for the area of a slice of pie. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> Brilliant. Sunny with all sorts of walnut. Yeah, you, you don't need to show any of this one. I mean, this I like that that shot though of that pie server in the middle. That that really that just came out beautiful. Really, really nice job. More during the disaster. That one came out spectacular. Really looks nice. Very, very nice. I don't know who you are, but uh, I'd love to uh, see you jump on, rise up. Uh, she's, on, she's been on a few times. Uh, I've, met yeah. her, I've met her a couple of times. Yeah. Where, where is she from? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't remember. Oh, no. Okay. No worries. Awesome. Jam Cat Spoon Shed. Not sure who this one is, but beautiful pie server. Like the cherries, very nice. Great job. Orin with the ever present snail, love it. God, Loquat is just gorgeous wood. That is absolutely spectacular. I love the I love the like the the swoop that he put in the curve into the the neck and the handle. Cool. Amazing. Amazing wood. <laughs> right? It's just so yeah. gorgeous to look at. I marvel at that one that, that he sent me like every day. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And that pie, of course. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm. Photogenic pie. 
You know, maybe we need to have a, a quiche server template. <laughs> I think I think his transition to the scoop is is one of the best. Yeah. It's just yeah, so it's it's so cool unique form. to the yeah, it's just yeah different than, different than all of us. Love that. Yeah, really, really nice. And that just that that swoop and that curve that he you know introduced in the handle there, really nice. And the hump right before the right before the yep. yeah, right there. Yeah, so cool. Yep. Yeah, it's a good shot of it. Really spectacular. Yep. Aaron is a wonderfully talented man. Really great job. Herbivore. Happy nice. anniversary, Patrice. Yeah, great I'm shot. So excited. Thank Wasn't you. it oh, your anniversary Kaylin, as well, Kaylin? Why are you I'm not present. sharing? Yeah, Patrice and I share a Rise Up anniversary. I forgot to do a, um, a shout out earlier, but. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. <laughs> Patrice, I'd like to, can I ask a question on that? On your kill rosing, the, the bottom area where it's darker, is that just, did you just lay in more powder or did you actually, or is, did you carve it deeper? Um, I carved more. So I just started with uh, diagonal cross hatching. Okay. And then for that section, I um, went against that grain, right? So cross hatched. <laughs> so there's actually a uh, a so lot it's more checked, color checked as opposed to just slashed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it came out very that's nice. A good way to say it, but that kind of seems to be my style because I really uh, like to go back and make things darker, and then I end up colorizing twice as much as I plan to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it really lets you emphasize like sections that you want to highlight, and then if you didn't get enough pigment in, you just go at the lines a little bit more and get it a little deeper too. So I would say more lines and then deeper lines. Okay. Is the, like, I don't know if it's just the picture or if like in this area, as opposed to some of these other areas, did you find that some of your pigment got down into the wood grain and? In some places, yeah. So like around the O and the R. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I that's what gone... I thought back but the rest like that's actually the wood grain and it just okay uh, has interesting spots and that's all I, I, like that's even all with cool. the oiling i found that sometimes i get like a lot of that like staining if you will of the pigment down into the wood grain even if i've oiled first and let it cure um it just still seems to sometimes muddy it up yeah that it all depends tip. on the wood yeah do you I just was working on this black birch uh, one that was I showed you earlier, and it it stained and it's been oiled like four or five coats already. But I wanted to go back and call rose it anyway. Do and you burnish stained. as well as the oiling prior to call rosing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So has anybody experimented with um, other pigments to get different colors instead of just the brown or black from cinnamon or coffee? Yes. And it did some success? <laughs> uh, limited success. I would say um, uh, you, you, you tend to lose the color quite a bit with most other things. Um, so I've tried like turmeric to try and, you know, with like, you know, get, get a kind of a yellowy orange and and that just ends up staining the wood immensely. I, um, I just actually was working on one because uh, we were talking about it before this. And I used the watercolor pencils that I paint them with to try and fill the lines. But I don't really like the way it turned out. So. Mm. Yeah, that, I mean, that was all cocoa powder, you said, Patrice? That you used? Cocoa powder. Yeah. I know there's. There's people who have done a lot with, in terms of like natural pigments and, and, you know, 
both in terms of dyes as well as for you know coal rosing and stuff like that. And some things like the color could be strong initially, and then it just fades so much over time that it it it's not really worth it. So I don't know. I, I've, my uh, my tablet died. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know if I was in the middle of a sentence or not. I think we got had you done. Yeah, I don't think you were. Okay, good. Here, I'll show you that one. If oh, you're still sharing, Chuck. Oh, I can uh, I can stop sharing. Here, let me uh, let me find that one. Where is it? There it is. Let me uh, spotlight it real quick. There you go. So it it, it sort of worked. I mean, the darker colors worked. The the reds and the pinks did not work as well. It almost just seems kind of washed out. So I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll go back in and paint some more depth into the, the rose itself. But you can see that the, you know, the, the greens actually bled out into the wood a certain amount. Mm. You know, and it, it just kind of comes down to how finely ground your pigment is. So I guess what the other thing I was saying, I think when I got cut off was that I did do some experiments with earth pigments so um, some various uh, like greens and, and uh, blues and because they were ground for paints, they were so fine that they just really bled into the surrounding wood immensely. So that, that you know, this, this isn't horrible. It's just not as nice as I would like it to be. Good. Yeah, I guess there's a fine line there between too finely ground and not finely ground enough yeah yeah exactly i mean the finer you know it's like it's got to be fine enough to like fill you know the the incised lines well but if it's too fine it can really just bleed into the wood substantially mm. but you can see you know in, in in these areas you know where there's no color at all um still some of it when I kind of wiped things down and cleaned it up I ended up dragging a little bit into the grain overall yeah I don't know though I mean it actually looks really nice to me I mean it's it's a it it I think it looks beautiful myself I, but... I think it worked with the the greens and, and yellows and kind of browns that I did in the vines and the leaves but the I don't like the flower yeah I hear you Nice. So, All right. Thanks. Sure. Let me uh, go back and share screen again. Uh, where am I? Screen two. That's where I was. Share. All right. Moving on. Oh, that was just the reminder post. Michael's God, that wood is just gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> really spectacular, Michael. It looks like thin wood through water. Yeah. Right? Beautiful. A good way of describing it. Yeah, that, that shimmer is just so cool. I love that. Very nice. I do love those smooth forms. Really, really beautiful. Jody, really nice. Enjoy. Beautiful, beautiful spoon. I love that chip carving, Jody. I think it's so playful and the little enjoy. It's yeah. Really Thank you. Ab absolutely. I called it a spoon. Pie server. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that play of the, the 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 play of the grain lines in there. No, that was a happy accident. Isn't that cool? That is really neat. That really works. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is this is cherry, you said? Yeah. Yep, cherry. Yeah. Really nice. Thanks. Now I just have to go bake that apple pie. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I love the 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 pie uh, slice 
elements on that handle. That's a really cool design element. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Great job, Brad. And that's colored with, with uh, fabric markers that are made for cellulose. So I hope it's permanent. Mm. We'll find out. <laughs> Very cool. Really nice. George. Hello. Oh, so Florian's. He's here. Yeah. yeah and Suzanne. Oh my gosh. Hey, buddy. Hey, you guys. Look at all you over there. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my yeah. pie service at home, so that I, that's why I couldn't talk about it. Really, really nice. Beautiful. Is this all cherry? Yeah. I was trying to make a feather spoon, like in the grain, but uh, didn't really work out. So the yeah, second on this one, one, the, the yeah. left one is, is, yeah. uh, is um, uh, bent branch. So the 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 uh, grain, it, there's no short grain in it, in the in the server. Got it. And yeah. And I nearly so managed to make a feather spoon, but it's only the the long the right one is a feather spoon on the back. <laughs> Didn't count. So. That looks really spectacular, though the grain in that. It looks yeah, it looks very nice. Really, really gorgeous, George. As always, you do such wonderful work. Thank you. Beautiful I job. Are having a very humble rise up meetup group there in the background, George. Right. Floor here. <laughs> we started off with some blacksmithing, and now with uh, carving tools. Nice. Nice. Some nice something in between. I love that plate, Poggy. That's a that's a beautiful plate. Yeah, it's just um, it's the only one I have in this color. Thank you. Really, really nice. It, it's it's such a beautiful contrast for the wood. Yeah, I, I was looking for a contrast, and um, then I was just <laughs> felling over over the plate, and then because it was taken out of the dishwasher, and thought, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a good choice. <laughs> Great, great choice. Beautiful pie server. You really did a great job. I love the little uh, asymmetrical asymmetrical uh, top end of your handle there. Really nice. And that, that the knot that's sort of in there, really cool. Yeah, the, um, the handle, that was just by accident. Um, by Jody, by the way. <laughs> um, and um, it feels quite good yeah. for, my, for the little finger. Yeah, but um, yeah, if you if you're playing around with the handle um, in your hands, then it's it's quite good. Otherwise, nice. Yeah, great job. Thank you. There's some more pictures of JCs. Very nice, Rowan. A lot of process shots. Simon's beautiful job. He's got a nice little kind of looks like a, a like a tail flip on the back of that end of that handle too. That looks great. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, I think the call. I think the call rose uh, pattern there looks fantastic. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh, nice. It fits so good to the wood. Yeah, and the, the 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 baking of the wood really did add a lot of color to that. That's beautiful. If that's lime, then yeah, it really brought out uh, some beauty in that wood. Great job. All right, Suze. 
feathers. Very nice. Great job, Suze. Nice. Yeah, it looks great, Jurgen. And I think that was the last one. Scroll up. Yep, that was it. All right. I am going to stop screen sharing and uh, drop back out to the gallery view. And just fantastic job, everybody. Uh, really. Oh, Rachel, I see you're here. Did you do a pie server, Rachel? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't get right. All righty. Well, then that's the end of our RUAC Spoon Challenge 25 show and tell. Thanks once again, uh, Emily, for the fantastic template. And uh, thank you, Sonny, for your work, as always, putting these to get templates together with their creators and getting them posted to the site. The RUAC Spoon Challenge 26 template is posted. It's up on the riseupandcarve.com uh, challenge page. Uh, and it's a wonderful template by Jeff Fryett. Um, so our next show and tell, I think Sunny said is October 9th. I think it's the 9th. If it's, uh, if it's whatever that Saturday is. But this next one is going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So much later than our normal rise up uh, show and tell time. And that's to accommodate uh, Jeff in New Zealand so that he can be part of it. So uh, until then, uh, I bid you all a fond farewell and we will uh, catch you on the next time. I'm gonna stop recording.